morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's a Friday. A week from now, I'll be in the middle of that clinic. And it's very exciting. I haven't taught a clinic for a long time. Um, yesterday, I started talking about the autonomic nervous system and how everything kind of connects through hormones. So, and eyes, people eyes, and our need to reach out and grab. And it's that <clears throat> need to reach out and grab our horses that gets us into a lot of trouble with our horses. If you have a particularly sensitive individual who is really compliant and willing to work with you, you can get away with it. But a lot of times it's not a good thing. So I remember being in the position in the late 60s of owning my first horse. <clears throat> and that horse didn't back up very well. Um, he would run backwards, but he didn't back up when you asked him to. And he never stepped sideways. And I became very curious about how to move a horse sideways. Um, off of either side, it didn't matter. And one of the things that I went to England hoping to learn was how to move horses away from pressure. Pressure from me, uh, moving them sideways so I could open a gate from them or move them up beside an object, a table or a fence post so I could pick something up or put something down and I didn't learn that. I, I came home from England with my first degree. I didn't have that and, and I was really curious about that and quite honestly it wasn't until Bill DeBar came into my life and who is Bill DeBar? Bill DeBar is a lawyer First of all, he's 83, coming 84 sometime this year. I'm not sure when. And um, he was an amateur horseman, but he was a very knowledgeable horseman. And so he taught me about moving horses away from pressure. You know, your horse is, you know, got its head on you and pushing on you. You know, you slap yourself. You don't have to reach out and slap the horse or take a whip to it. You slap yourself, and if that's um, sufficient, then that's all you need. But that'll get a horse to move away from you, and then somebody else is going to come along and say, yeah, but it's going to make its head go up. It does. It does. If that horse is really in that fight-flight mode, that um, sympathetic nerve function, which a lot of times they are, so now the big question is <clears throat> all this yielding stuff. One of the most important things you can do is to get a horse to back off of you. Get, get it to leave you alone. And, and at that point, quite honestly, it doesn't matter where its head is. Just get it off of you. You know, just get that thing away from you, especially if it's really crowding you. Sometimes, and I ran into that with a two-year-old this spring that I was working with, she wouldn't back up to rhythmic motion. And in fact, she would come a little closer. And she was facing me, and she was pretty tight. And I thought, this is a very interesting situation, but I was responsible for that line. She was the granddaughter of my old stallion and so I just very calmly reached out with my hand I rubbed on her jugular vein side of her neck a little bit she was fine with that and I put my hands like this on either side of the base of her of her windpipe I don't mean jugular vein I mean windpipe you've got that groove there on each side and I just quietly and I put pressure on. So now when you're looking at my hand here, pretend your horse and your 
neck is here, just at the base, somewhere on the front, and that their front feet are right here. So if you are observant and you pay attention to this, let's say, because that's going to be your right side, let's say the right front foot is ahead. Take the fingers and it kind of your fingertips, if you haven't gnawed them down to nothing, and, and kind of put a little feel on there, a light feel, and, and see what that horse does. And, and just wait for it. And don't get pushing and shoving. Just put that feel on there. And if you notice that the horse tries to take the weight off that foot, might not move the foot, but it takes the weight off, just rub it and stop for a moment. And um, then go back in. Start with the rub and put that feel on. And if it's that right front, use the fingers on, that are on the right side, or if you're using your, I'm left-handed, so I tend to use my left hand, but if you're right-handed and you're using your right hand, then use your thumb on the horse's right side. And you're connecting that feel through the horse's nervous system to their brain to connect to that foot, to move that foot backwards. And as soon as you see the horse try, rub them in, and you mess around with that, and that pretty soon that horse will start to back up for you if they're that kind of horse. Mostly, they're not. Mostly, they're not. And a lot of times, if you just do some kind of rhythmic motion to yourself, they'll back off of that. It's natural for horses, usually, to move away from rhythmic motion. So, once you get that so that that horse isn't crowding your personal space then the next thing is you want to encourage that horse to lower its head i have a videotape of a horse recently that came into uh, april johnson's life that was very high-headed and very you know trying to get away from the halter or your hand anything and um <laughs> I would reach up and touch her. My right arm doesn't come up very high. So I'd reach up and touch her, and, and she just, you know, and, and so as soon as she quit for a moment, I'd take the pressure off and turn the other way. Don't keep looking at him. And don't do that. What's the matter with you, you silly thing? Don't, don't do that, because they really are concerned. And, like, it's genuine. It's not a put-on. So you just keep going and you do that approach and retreat thing until they can tolerate that. And with that particular horse, she was 15, I think she's 16 this year. And pretty soon she would put her head down. But as soon as you made any kind of body motion that wasn't directed at her necessarily, somebody comes in and you say, and her head would go right back up because she's been preconditioned to do that. So you work on bringing that head down because just lowering the head will change them from the fight flight, the sympathetic towards the parasympathetic, which is where the ability to think and to reason and to process information comes in. And, and you want to work on that. I have to check my time here. I'm, I don't want to run over on my time here. So if you think about people teaching a little, a little child how to account or the alphabet, they need to take information into the short-term memory and then transfer it into the long-term memory. It takes, and my figures might be out of date, but I'm giving you an example here. It usually takes 30 to 50 reps for information to come into the short-term memory. Short-term memory lasts about 60 seconds and then it's gone. So when you have um, uh, a need to teach something, you need to put that information in, let it soak in. 
then you go check and see is it still there. If it's there, great. Uh, they can they can appreciate that they learned that thing. Give them a little time to to um, um, uh, feel good about it, and then um, information will transfer into the long term memory. So that thirty to fifty reps that it takes. Now the better individuals get at learning the less it takes, but especially at the beginning and especially with these horses that <clears throat> have been mismanaged and that have bad habits. It's the people that have bad habits. Just try to be patient with that. So <clears throat> every time that horse brings its head down, you just, you find a place where that horse really appreciates being rubbed and you rub it there. It might be on the side of their neck. It might be on their, whether, wherever it is. Not on their face, because that's kind of invasive of their space. So once you can get the horse to freely lower its head, then you can do other things that are um, <clears throat> going to help you out with that. So anytime you notice that your horse is getting a little fearful about something, ask it to lower its head. And, and you'll see a big, a big change in the relationship that you have with yourself and your horse. But the other thing you might want to pay attention to is <clears throat> if you notice that there's something happening, somebody let the dog out of the house, the kids are running around, uh, you want to trailer load the horse, you want to do something, <clears throat> and you get anxious yourself, don't be surprised if your horse gets anxious. So the first thing you can do is control your own anxiety. And as you learn to control your anxiety and you give the horse the tools to be able to dump off their emotional stress by lowering their head, then now you've got a, something that you can start to work with. And that's an ongoing process. You want to... You, you never want to quit working on that because every day, every time you do something with a horse, there will be a stress factor involved, whether it's the stress that you've put on the horse through yourself or just asking the horse to do that complicated thing, or maybe it's an environmental stress. But you want to be able to acknowledge that horse's stress and you want to Download that stress by lowering the neck and head. I'll talk about more of this. I'll talk more about this in the future. So anyway, there's your little nugget for the day. Thank you. Bye.